too, okay? They just can't wait to Halloween. Like every day is Halloween to them in October. Okay, that's Tyson James, Demon Mutt. I don't rock with Demon Mutt. No demons whatsoever. I was reading the scripture today. Um, hold on, let me pause that, brother. I was reading the scripture today. Um, I saw it on someone's, uh, I think it was on Instagram. And they had it as a, you know, a word, like a little meme. What was it? I don't know, my phone. It's Psalms, maybe six and four. Yeah, there it is, yeah. Psalm 36 and 4. Let me just read up on it from Psalm 36, verse 1 to verse 4. And it, it is written, The transgression of the wicked says within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flatters himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He has left off to be wise and to do good. He devises mischief upon his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He abhors not evil. And that's what we're really stuck out right there. Okay. He abhors not evil. And I went, I did a study on abhor and hateful. And uh, yeah, that Holy Spirit. First Thessalonians chapter five. See, we got to hate what God hates. God hates evil. Okay? In all of its forms. Okay. Let me see. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 22. I'm surprised I ain't got it highlighted in this uh, King James here. I probably got it in Holly Mother Bible. And it is written Abstain from all appearance of evil. And that word abstain means to abhor, like to detest. Okay, like, oh, like I can't with. Ew, okay, to detest, okay, abstain from all appearance of evil. In one translation, I think it might be in lit literal, it says to uh, abstain from or abhor uh, from all forms of evil. Because evil comes in many different forms, okay, through your, you know, through the eye gate. The ear gate, okay, uh, is presented and manifests itself in a lot of forms, uh, seducing spirits, uh, you know, women being ultra, ultra sensual, men being ultra sensual, you know, displaying their flesh. I see it online all the time. I don't mean necessarily be looking for it, <laughs> you know, like that. Just be scrolling and bam, there it is. Matter of fact, I was on YouTube. And uh, scrolling, and then you come off, the, come across the shorts. I'm looking at the shorts, and I see a woman. She's like, um, she works out. She that's her platform. She works out and stuff like that. So I clicked on it, and uh, and she's there, and she's narrating her own video. Say so, yeah, okay. Like she's making poses when she's been, and she said, "Look at me. This is where I'm at. I'm showing off my butt. I'm doing this, and I'm showing how big my butt is." She's narrating, actually mocking herself, narrating her video. Really, she's actually mocking her viewers because she knows that 
probably most likely the majority of her viewers are watch not watching her to get health tips. They're watching her to lust after her body. And she knows it. And she's using it, you know, her body to get viewers to make money. She's basically prostituting her own self. And I was like, you know, because like I said, she's narrating. And I think it was um, uh, close captions, words was on it as well. So I'm like, as I'm listening to it, I'm like, and I'm, like, and I'm listening. I was like, hold on, what's she saying? And I'm, I was like, oh, wow. She is clowning her viewers. She's mocking her viewers. She's like, look at me. Okay, when I do this, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm highlighting my butt. And I'm doing this. And, you know, when I get down like that, I mean, I thought I heard her say the P word. I'm like, whoa, like, they could just do that? Yeah, not surprised. You know, a lot of vulgar language and just some people just outright, just blank, you know, vulgar. I don't care what anybody say, you know, that's their character. Okay. And the Lord has been showing me and I got to take heed. You know, he said, abstain. Oh, also that word appearance and form, it means view. Yeah, that's what it was. So, you know, like I thought about the show on TV. I think it's ABC. It's called The View. See, and there are so many views of evil that are presented to us. The world view, sin view, evil view, and all kind of forms. Okay. And so the Holy Spirit, the Lord dealt with me. It's like, okay, you got to stop going over here and peeping over there. Like, God, like, you know, I really shouldn't be during this, looking at this, you know, like that. Okay. And, uh, not saying it's porn, porn, but the word does say, I'm not trying to justify or make excuses. It says, if a man looks on a woman and lusts after her, he has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And I know this, but temptation, because like we might not, you don't have to be necessarily seeking it out. But as you're online scrolling and stuff, bam, it's just presented like so much, so much, so much forms, appearances, views of evil. Like they racking up views and racking up dollars. Okay. And so, uh, but to take responsibility, if I use myself, for example, the Lord has let me know um, that I need to, when I see it, what we're supposed to do is to gird up the loins of our mind. Of course, we got to say prayerful. And we got to immediately cast down every imagination and every high thing that is off itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And it says, having a re readiness to revenge all disobedience when our obedience is fulfilled. <laughs> and so I've been acknowledging that, like, Lord, forgive me, you know what I'm saying, like that. Give me more grace to overcome this sinful tendency. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's one thing that you're going about your, your normal course of living and it comes, you know, in many forms and appearances and views and things like that. You know, you want, you know, you watching a, a wholesome program and then uh, the commercial comes on and they got women and men, they're naked and, you know, and stuff like that. It's like, I didn't sign up for this. I'm not watching this program. And but when the commercials come on, it's all these appearances and views of forms of evil. You know, and I got to turn my and away from it, you know what I'm saying? I got to mute some stuff, you know, like that, you know? We all do. And so we got to be very, the word says, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Okay? And he also uses people and things and forms and appearances of evil to seduce us away through our eye gate, through our ear gate. And we definitely got to, you know what I'm saying, guard our heart with all diligence. Take heed how we hear. Okay, made a covenant with our eyes to not set any wicked thing before them. So, you know, not try to make no excuses, just find anything. But we are bombarded with so much temptation in our day and time, okay? 
But the word says, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will make with the temptation, make a way for you to escape that you may be able to bear it. So sometimes, you know, we got to we gotta look for the way of escape. That means cast it down like that. Sometimes we got to flee from evil in all of its forms, its views, its appearances. We have to run away from it, cast it down, you know what I'm saying, like that, and flee from it, get away from it, you know what I'm saying, like that, as much as possible. Turn away from it, run away from it, okay? Yeah, abstain. From, so I, I looked at that word. That's what it is, abstain. Is, that word is uh, to abhor. To detest, another word is to hate. Yes, we are supposed to hate all appearances and forms, okay, in whatever form it presents itself through our eye gate, ear gate, or whatever, through the flesh, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of light. Evil. We are supposed to hate, detest, abhor evil. We're supposed to hate what God hates. God hates sin, God hates evil. In all of its forms, abstain from all appearance, all views, okay, all forms of evil. See, and I think some of we because we like, okay, I'm just looking just a little bit, just satisfying that my lust in my eyes. I'm not gonna do nothing with it. I'm just admiring it like that. And it's like, no, <laughs> you know, that's a deception. Because as I just said, if a man looks on a woman and that goes to a woman, a woman, you know, she looks on a woman, she looks on a man that's not her husband with lust, you know what I'm saying, her heart or his heart, okay, it's adultery in the heart. So it lets us know. We got to start at the gates, you know what I'm saying, like that. We got to draw a, a boundary, you know what I'm saying, we got to watch and pray. So when that evil in all of its forms and appearances and what appears and looks and views to be evil, we, we're not sure. We see it. we like, okay, it might be in the darkness. Like, wait, we got to call out. The watchman got to call out and say, you're a friend or a fro. Okay? And if they're not identifying themselves as a friend that you could welcome into your eye, ear, gate, so to speak, your heart, and have fellowship with and communion with, we got to stop and say, stop. Stop right there. No, see, it's still approaching. No, okay. We have to uh, neutralize, neutralize it. And it got to start in the inner man first, you know, to guard the heart, to guard the ear gates, to guard the eye gates, okay, to bring our flesh under subjection, exercise temperance, self-control. Yeah. Abstain, abhor, detest, hate. All appearance, all forms and views of evil, especially this month, October. I mean, it's like, man, you can't even turn the channel. You know what I'm saying? Like every channel is like just promoting evil, horror, evil. It's all over the place. <laughs> okay. I was scrolling. Uh, uh, somebody live was on somebody live. I followed like they do New, New York scopes. They walk around and they're like, it's lit up in New York. And people, they're not even waiting to Halloween. They're walking around with costumes on in the streets, all over the on sidewalks, all over the place, okay, with, with Halloween costumes on. Mm -hmm. They can't wait. Because, you know, that's a daily thing for them, you know? And just because you don't see somebody put on an actual outer costume, oh, they're wearing masks. They're wearing masks. Like, every day they're wearing masks. Okay? Because that's Satan's mode of operation. It's deception to appear Okay, the word said they have a form of godliness, but denying the power of the others. You know what I'm saying? A form, abstain from all forms of evil. They have a form of godliness. So we got to be able to discern between good and evil and know that that's just a form. And if they're using that as a form, as a covering, as a mask, a cup, you know, that means that they are a deceiver. Many deceivers have gone out into the world. They are deceivers. They want you to be attracted to the form, to the outer appearance, to the view. Okay, to get you to let down your guards and give them place. Okay, give in to sin, give in to temptation. And then they'd be like, bam, come out like jack in the box. And you'd be like, oh my God, 
You just laid with a demon. <laughs> the body was just, you know what I'm saying, a form that the demon was inhabiting. You know what I'm saying? Like that. You know, all these seducing spirits, deceiving spirits. You just yoked up with it. God forbid. Hopefully it won't be you or me or anything like that. But take heed. Okay? It says, uh, shall I then take the members of Christ and, you know, and, be, and join them to a harlot? Okay? God forbid. No, we shouldn't. We're joined to the Lord. Whoever is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And of course, you know what I'm saying? The husband is joined to his wife. They two become one. So if you're single, we ought to be joined to the Lord. We are one spirit. Okay? Amen. First Corinthians chapter six. And there's something to take each. I can't really, really back up and read up on my point. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine, it reads, do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do you not know this? That the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither and I wonder why it is written like this. Like it's making these distinctions. Oh, because you because you would think that the the unrighteous is well, let me just read it. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? It says, Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards nor revilers nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Like, why did he make a distinction? Like, aren't all these people unrighteous? But he's saying, he's writing this to the believers who are the righteous, saying, do not be deceived. Okay? Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? If you didn't, now you know. They not they won't, because he's going to say that in the conclusion. But he says, be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor violence, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And it says, and such were, that's past tense, and such were some of you. Like we, this used to be our life. <laughs> this used to be our life and our testimony and our evil works. You know, our mode of operation. So we, and it's not like we can't, uh, we don't know where the unbeliever, the unrighteous are coming from. You know, they might think, oh, oh you think you're so holy. You're holier than thou. No, uh, I used to be just like you. Probably was a bigger sinner and a bigger a whoremonger than you was. Okay? It ain't like, I, you know, I was born holy. I was born again of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And except the man is born, of, born from above, born of the Holy Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Titus 3 says, For we ourselves also were, that's past tense, sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers, various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, Hateful. See, it's a good hate and it's a bad hate. Okay, hateful and hating one another. Okay, full of hate and hating other people. People, don't, you know what I'm saying? Hating other people, hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, okay? We must be born again, okay? Born from above, 
which he shed on us abundantly, richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs to heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Like we used to be just just, just like y'all, you know what I'm saying, like that. So we're not acting holier than thou. Like, we know where you're coming from. And that's always Satan in, uh, in the world uh, uh, sin's appeal. It's appealing to what is familiar, that what we've been, you know, we used to practice. We used to be a slave of, okay? And try to come up with some new tricks as well, you know, to deceive us. When the word says... Uh, here, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. This is our identity now. We're strangers to this world. We're pilgrims. Pilgrims like we are, we're passing through. Okay? Abstain. Got to go over it again. Abstain. Abhor. Abstain from fleshly lust. Those are desires, sinful desires, which war against the soul. Those Fleshly lusts, sinful desires, they don't come, you know what I'm saying, just to give us like uh, the pleasure. There's pleasure in sin for a season, okay? But to take us captive, it's like to war against our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions. Like it ain't just coming just with the pleasure principle, okay? Now it is anti Christ. It is anti, you know what I'm saying? It is against us. It's trying to, you know, it's a purpose of war. You want to uh, conquer the enemy. You want to take them captive and sub subdue them and make them serve your interests, your will. We're to abstain from fleshly lust, fleshly desires, which war against our souls. It ain't bringing no peace. It ain't bringing no, no love. It ain't bringing no joy. It ain't bringing no pleasure. First Peter chapter four says, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh or in the body, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Don't go and take up arms, physical weapons of arming, because weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Got to put down those strongholds in our minds and, and everywhere else. Okay? Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Let this mind that's in Christ be in you, be in me. For he that has suffered in the flesh or in the body has ceased from sin. Stop practicing intentional sin. No longer is a slave of sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh or in the body to the lust of men. Okay? To the lust of men. Okay? But to the will of God. So we're not to live you know, to fulfill the desires of men without the spirit, their carnal, worldly lust, sinful lust, but to the will of God. It says, for the time past of our life, before we he saved us, for the time past of our life may suffice, suffice us to have worked the will of the Gentiles or the nations. It was sufficient, okay? In the day that we heard his voice, now is the set the time. Now is the day of salvation. It is a gulf fix. That's your past life. Okay, now you're born from above. This is your new life. It's a gulf fix. And we always, you know, trying to go back, but we never can cross that gulf, especially if we've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Okay, because it's vanity. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have worked the will of the Gentiles of the nations. See, that's the will of the nations. The will of men, that's not the will of God. That was sufficient when the Lord intervened in our life. When we walk or we'll live in lasciviousness, lust, all kinds of various lusts, pleasures, excess of wine, you know, drink a little wine for your stomach's sake, okay? But no excess of wine to the point that the person under the floor is near drunk. They have no self-control. Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit excess of wine, revelings. You see people just reveling, dancing all in the street, drinking all out in the street, revelings, banquetings, you know what I'm saying, like that. You know, this overindulgence and food and drink and party and revelry and abominable idolatries. Like, okay, they're really serving their own lust and the lust of men and will, uh, lust of men and their wills, even Satan's will. Serving, you know, even idols. 
He says, wherein they think it strange that you do not run with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. They're like, what? You don't love sin no more? No, uh, I hate sin. I'm supposed to hate sin. That's the commandment. But we be to do the, we're thinking about the pleasure principle. We, we start thinking back like how it used to be, the what we used to, what we used to see, then to wait to God to fulfill those pleasures in righteousness. See what I'm saying? Like say if someone never been married, all your sexual experience be, from the time you were a virgin, okay, until the time the Lord saved you, that was all in sin. So then we like, okay, you know, I'm not a virgin anymore. I didn't have sex and I didn't have sex and everything like that. So we're going off of what we know, what we used to do and think and how it was. We haven't experienced the pleasure of sex in holy matrimony. So we keep running back, trying to get that same feeling instead of waiting for God to fulfill it through a husband and a wife in holy matrimony, like something we never experienced. See? A lot of people don't wait. They would go with They seduced away by, you know, their past experiences, their past memories, even haunted by it. We got to really do spiritual warfare and pray to overcome, to cast those things down. And many times, you know what I'm saying, my past, you know what I'm saying, past uh, escapades, we might say, come back and try to, you know, haunt me or try to tempt me and say, yeah, remember how it used to be? You know? But if you want something that you never had, you got to do something you never did. That's what they say. If you keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result, that's insanity. You're not going to get, you know, a different result. In fact, if you go back and do it in sin, then the Holy Spirit is going to convict us. Okay. And we're going to know that we, God is not pleased with us. Like it's not worth it. It's better to, you know what I'm saying, to wait. Wait on the Lord. And, and um, it's better to marry than to burn. Okay. Marriage is good and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge, as he was saying back here. Don't you know they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God? God will judge. And they think it's strange. Like, you don't love sin? What's wrong with you? Like that song on the opposite, Mary, Mary uh, what is uh Erica Campbell? And then she said, You don't love God? What's what, what's wrong with you? That's what we say to the sinner man, to the unrighteous, to the unbeliever. You don't love God? Like, what's wrong with you? You don't love God? And they look at us like, you don't love sin? You don't love evil? You don't love serving the devil? You don't love serving the, the will of the nations and the lust of other men no more? What's wrong with you? Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? It says, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. That's what we hope be live, live according to God in the spirit, not according to the lust of the flesh or the lust of other people's wills or their evil desires. Amen. Praise God. Back in 1 Corinthians 6, 11. And such were, that's past this, that's that old man. Let him stay dead. Stop going back and try to, you know, raise him up. <laughs> raise him up from the dead. Let him stay dead. And such were some of you and his evil works. Let them stay there as well. We were delivered from them. And such were some of you. We used to be just like that. Okay. He's, but you are washed. Okay. As we said there in Titus chapter three, you are washed. I'll read it again for you. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers, various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, because all our righteousness are as filthy rags. But according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, which he shed on us abundantly, richly, lavishly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. But you and I are washed. 
You and I are sanctified, set apart for the master's use. But you and I are justified, declared righteous in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and so uh, I'm getting down to my further point. So as all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I would not be brought under the power of any. <laughs> Although, you know what I'm saying, you may find things are permissible and legal and uh, like that, you know, like you got the liberty and freedom to do it, but not all things that are, you know, permissible are edifying to us. See? It's not going to be good for us. So we have to discern. So just because I can do a thing, what would be the end result if I did that? Would it make me a slave? Would it bring me a bondage? Would it put me out of favor with God, so to speak? OK, you know, like I said, he says, but I would not be brought under the power of any. Will it make me out of a slave? Galatians 5, 1, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, the freedom wherewith Christ has made you free. You are not free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage, of slavery. It's going to just bring us back into slavery. Just because you can do a thing don't mean you should do it. If especially it's going to bring you back into bondage and slave to it, to sin, see, then don't do it. Just because you can do something, okay, don't mean that we should do it. So, uh, this was probably something like some of the false teachers and was saying, it was when my study was saying, they were saying meats for the belly. Like, you know, food is made for the stomach. And the, the stomach, the belly for meats. Like it doesn't matter, you know. But it said, but God shall to destroy both it and them. Wow. Okay. It says, now the body is not for fornication. I didn't create the body for fornication or adultery, but for the Lord. God cares about our whole person, our whole spirit, our whole soul, our whole body to be preserved blameless unto the coming of the day of the Lord. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And in some translation, it says, which is your spiritual act of worship. You know, we always think just worship, we bow down and, you know what I'm saying, like doing obeisance to God and praise and worship and even our service. But guess what? God, like, no, I want it all. I want your whole spirit. I want your whole soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, and your whole body. I want it all presented to me as a living sacrifice, holy, because that's the only way it's going to be acceptable unto God, which is our spiritual act. Of worship. So we can go through the, the physical act of worship, bowing down and doing works, of, you know what I'm saying, or service as unto the Lord when, and speaking good things as unto the Lord. Okay? Those are the physical aspects of worship. This is our spiritual acts of worship. So we haven't been taught that a lot. We're like, yeah, God, you can have all this on the external stuff, but you can't get to the, to the heart of me, my spirit, my heart. You, you can't. I'm not going to worship you in spirit and in truth. You know what I'm saying? Like that. But uh, I go to church. <laughs> I'm present. Okay. Y'all finished? All right. I'm out the door before the benediction. So I can say, check that off. Did that. Been here. Done that. Got the t-shirt. They selling t-shirts and hats. I got it. I got it. Look, I'm supporting them. You need to hear that, Officer Davis. Amen. Praise God. We all do. Okay. He said, meats for the belly and belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication nor adultery, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Okay. Amen. He said, I'm going to make me a body. He made a body and he, he came. Okay. It's written up, you know what I'm saying? To do your will. Can't quite quote this in Hebrews and like that. Anyway, 14, he says, and God has both raised up the Lord. Speaking of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah, and will also raise up us by his own power. Okay, it's a bodily resurrection. Okay, it's a re bodily resurrection. You know, to be absent from the body, be pre uh, present with the Lord, 
But uh, when the time for the resurrection comes, that body, I don't care if it's in the form of ashes and ain't up by who knows what, okay? It's going to come together, okay? Bone upon bone, flesh upon flesh, okay? It's going to stand up, okay? And it's going to come together with the spirit. What kind of spirit is going to come together with? Mm -hmm. So he goes on to say, uh, verse 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15, know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Do you not realize that your body, my body, okay, all believers' bodies are members of Christ? That is of Christ's body, okay? Many members, but one body. See, always talking about the church, the church, the church. That's a building, okay? the body of Christ, of which Christ is the head of all things to his body. I get tired of people. Christ is the head of the church. No, no, that's a mistranslation. Okay? If you go look up the word for church, you will see it is not the Greek word ekklesia. It's a different word. <laughs> okay? So that's an error on the people who have uh, translated it from the original text. So it's no error in the word of God. It's error in men. And men have put Little errors there. You're in the spirit, and he'll show you where they are. And as for ministers, and of course, you can study yourself. Go look it up for yourself. We ought to correct the errors, okay? We ought to, re, you know, re receive correction from error, okay? Reprove errors, okay? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Know you not that your bodies, our bodies, are the members of Christ, Okay? One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one Lord, God above all, and in you all, through you all. Shall I then take the members of Christ? You, me, other believers are members of Christ. Shall I take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. Even all parts of this body. Shall I take this body and join it with a harlot, a whore, a prostitute, with a male or female? No. God forbid. And God forbids it. Okay, you go ahead and force it and do it anyway presumptuously and think you're not going to suffer the consequences. Like getting uh, a venereal disease or even worse. An incurable disease that man can't cure. It's going to take the power of God to cure. Okay, but don't do it. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. Wow. Mm. I don't want to go. It's too much. That's too deep. It'll take me off and down. You know, I ain't going to go there. But we got to be mindful of that. We are members of Christ's body. We have to stop, you know what I'm saying, prostituting, uh, you know, uh, God, the Lord's body, you know what I'm saying, with other prostitutes, you know, male or female, you know what I'm saying, or any other beast of the field or anything like that, or self-pleasing ourselves because it's affecting the whole body. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. We don't know that, you know, we need to realize that what we do, it affects other members in the body. It, it means that we have to still take accountability for it, and God will convict us for it, you know, saying like that. But what we do does affect other members of the body of Christ. It's like a pebble, you know, saying if you throw it in the lake in the pond, it's going to spread out. Like I say, it's really going to spread out for good, and we reap what we sow. When it hit the banks, it's going to come back either for good or for evil. You put out evil, you're going to reap the same. You put out good, you should have praise from the same. It does affect others. And guess what? It starts at the people who are closest to us, our family members. It just starts spreading like a cancer, like gangrene, like leaven in the bread. It rises and rises and rises till it's all leavened. So we got to keep that in mind when we're tempted to sin and the backslide and go back and practice sin, even in pride and think, I'm not hurting nobody. It's not hurting nobody. Yes, it is. Because it's not... Just, a, you know, your member, you know, really, we need to think in terms that we are a spiritual body. We come together and assemble in a physical body. Okay. And we come together to assembly. That's a physical assembly. Okay. But we already, you know, say are baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. Okay. That's a spiritual assembly. We, You know what I'm saying? We got to think about it. What you do in your heart when I do it, it is, it's an affecting. It's permeate, permeating through the body. We have to stop making the Lord fellowship with our sins. Of course, he's not so much and like that. He's going to 
convict by the Holy Spirit. Okay, he's gonna produce godly sorrow conviction in the heart. And then I'm like, oh, I just welcome all that, you know, saying that lust. You know, you got your heart and everything like that. It's like, oh, no. You know what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit began to abhor, convict, you know what I'm saying? Like that and to test and hate. Like, uh -uh, I don't have no fellowship with that sin. You know what I'm saying? And sin conviction. And you're like, oh, where that come from? Oh, God, oh, forgive me, Lord. Oh, Lord, I know I should have I should have did that. Okay, oh, I'm godly sorrow. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Create me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. Yes, he ain't gonna fellowship with no sin. He gonna convict sin. That's what it said. The Holy Spirit, when he sent them, he shall reprove the world of sin. He ain't like, oh yeah, I just welcome all your sins. No, that was on Christ on the cross. The Holy Spirit, you no, know, he not fellowshiping with no sin. He, he called holy for a reason. Okay, that was put on Christ. Okay, no, he's not fellowshiping, having no communion with no sin. So you feel that conviction in your heart and your spirit. As the Holy Spirit, he's like, no, you need to repent of that. You need to forsake that. Change your mind concerning that. And you need to forsake it. And I'll forgive you. And I have mercy on you. And I'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Okay? And then, you know, we can come back together and, you know what I'm saying, and holy communion. Okay? And, I, and holy fellowship. Okay? What fellowship has light with darkness? None. Okay? Righteousness with unrighteousness? None. Okay? Light with uh, uh, Christ with Belial, the devil, none. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, like, I ain't, I ain't got no fellowship with, with none of that. But I'm not going to let you stay there and be content with it and be comfortable in it. I'm going to convict you of that. You know what I'm saying? We, you got to get rid of that. It says, be holy. Don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. But what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? It's emphatic, uh, obvious, none. None. And what communion? That is, communion has light with darkness. None. And what concord or agreement has Christ with Belial, or he's representation of the devil? None. Or, excuse me, or what part has he that believes with an infidel, an unbeliever? None. We don't. I don't know why people keep trying to have fellowship with unbelievers. We call to witness to them and to show them the love of God, the grace of God, and the mercy of God in the form of witness. Not to be coming under a diverse yoke together with them, like we in unison with them, you know, in agreement with them. No, we can't have, a, no, Holy Spirit not going to let that. That's why he said, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be yoked together with believers and believers. How can two walk together so they be agreed? Okay. They don't agree with your God. Okay. With the spirit of God, the word of God, with the body of Christ. Okay. So don't think you're going to take them in. No. It ain't going to, don't deceive yourself. Or what agreement has the temple of God? Your body, my body is the temple of the living God. With idols, none. For you are the temple of the living God. I am the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. So he ain't just sitting up in heaven on the throne. Okay. And walk in them. I mean, he's like, he's moving. He walking, he living. He ain't just like, okay, I'm just here. It ain't, you know. I'm just here. No, walking, living in them. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people, God's own possession. Wherefore, he says, come out from among them. Those are the unbelievers, the infidels. Okay? Come out from among the unbelievers. Come out from among the uh come out from among the unrighteous. Come out from among those who are living and walking in darkness come out from among, you know what I'm saying, Satan and demons and, you know, uh, ministers of Satan, children of the wicked one, okay? The infidel, come out from among them and be you separate, says the Lord. See, separated unto holiness. See? Godliness, righteousness, truth. Have yeah, fellowship and communion with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, so the living word, the body of Christ. Okay? As, as, and you and be you separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, anything that is unclean, and I will receive you. See, before we can have fellowship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we have to have a clean break with the world, the flesh, and the devil. Okay? We have to have a clean break. He said, then I will receive you, God. I don't just receive any sacrifice anyway. Okay? 
You got to forsake sin and the world, the devil, and your, your old practices, sinful ways. You got to leave all that behind. And then he said, I will receive you and I will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. Then it continues in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, it says, Having therefore these promises, this is God's promise. You separate, come out from among them and separate yourself, okay? I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord God Almighty. That's the promise of God. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us, see, we have responsibility individually. Let us collectively cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. Take a bath, take a shower, and spirit. See, the spirit too. What is polluting and corrupting the spirit of the man, the corrupting the mind? Okay, abhor from all that stuff. Abstain from it, detest it, give no place to it. And we'll be bringing our holiness unto perfection, unto you know what I'm saying? Maturity. Okay? Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. You might think, well, I ain't having sex with nobody, nothing like that. I ain't masturbating or nothing you know, like that. But looking at porn and looking at this and looking at that, we're presenting forms and views, you know what I'm saying? Appearances of evil. And we're taking it in through the eye gate, ear gate. You know what I'm saying? The flesh is getting stirred up. Evil desires are starting to grow, manifest. See? As a man thinketh, so is he. You know what I'm saying? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If it come in, it, it get there. It's like, oh, it's going to the heart, to the spirit of the man. It's like, oh, it's just, you know, I'm just watching it. I'm just listening to it. Like, it ain't having no... Oh, don't you believe that? Yes, it is. It's going to go straight to the heart. If you don't do something about it at the gates, it'll take root, okay? And then it will bear, begin to spread like a gangrene and begin to bear corrupt fruit, okay? And then the uh, expression of it are the works of the flesh. See, the Holy Spirit produced the fruit of the spirit. So if we quench in the spirit and we sow into the flesh, then it's going to produce, you know what I'm saying, works of the flesh. So that let us know, are we in the flesh or in the spirit. Okay, the word said, you know what I'm saying, that are in the flesh cannot please God. And our chief aim in, go in life is to please God. For it is God that works in you and me both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Okay, not our good pleasure. So if we, we know if we're pleasing God or not, are we in the flesh or are we in the spirit? Search your hearts. Ask the Lord to search your heart. See if there be any wicked way in, way in you and lead you in the way of everlasting. And help you to give you more grace to overcome those sinful tendencies that you will stop it at the gate. 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 Don't fellowship with it. Don't have no communion with it. Okay? Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. We should fear God, a holy reverence, okay? That we don't want to incur his displeasure his chastening rod, chastening hand. Back in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Know you not that your bodies, my body, our bodies, as believers, are the members of Christ? Now we know. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot, okay, a whore, a prostitute, whether male or female? God forbid. <laughs> Okay, and don't you do it presumptuously. Don't you force that. Don't you do that. God is forbidding that. Okay, keep back that, pray that prayer. Keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Okay, because you presume that I'm going to do this. I'm going to throw that skeleton to blow into the closet dough. You know what I'm saying? Like that. I'm down with OPP. Oh, you're going to have more. You're going to need more to o be down with OPP. You're going to need some, whatever they call it, all kind of medicines and taking pills and stuff like that. You're going to need more than OPP if you do that. It says, what? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? Just like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm explaining itself like that. It's one body. Do you not know this, that, that we as believers who are members of the body of Christ, if we join ourselves to a harlot, okay, individually or collectively, and I, I'm saying that as a reason for collectively, because there's, you know, there's a synagogue of Satan. 
Okay? We just say that. Okay? Come up among them. Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot, so speaking in terms of individual, is one body. This man joining himself to a harlot is one body. For two, says he, the Lord God, Jehovah, Jehovah, Yah, says, shall be one flesh. So we got to think about it. It's wow. So if I go and sleep with this person who's not my husband or wife, I mean, you know, They've already, you know what I'm saying, that's that's harlotry. And, and I'm participating in the harlotry too. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to make myself out of an F boy or an F girl. You know what I'm saying? Like that. I'm going to be doing the same thing. So I'm classified the same thing. I'm doing something I don't supposed to be doing. That's not in God's na nature and character that I'm identifying what I'm joining myself to. It ain't just that we just want and throw the scale in the bone and the closet up. Like, no, you just join that, joins your body to that person. Those two become one flesh. So, I've been so many times guilty, even after being saved, joining myself to a, a woman that's not my wife. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Okay? And, you know, people, they interpret it in the worldly terms. They have the term soul ties. That's what we need deliverance from soul ties. You know what I'm saying? You want to call it soul? It's more than a soul tie. You know what I'm saying? He said they, they're one flesh. You got the spirit. You got the soul and you got the body, which is the flesh, okay? And then you could be fleshly and carnal, you know what I'm saying, in your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, your spirit, your heart. It's it's all. You can't compartmentalize, you know what I'm saying, yourselves. I mean, some people, they're good at suppressing, like, I ain't going to put my heart in it, my feelings, my emotions, not in my mind. Do what you want to do. I ain't even here. I'm reading a book, okay? I'm not here. But don't think it's not going to affect every part of your person, your spirit, okay, your soul, and your body. I don't care. You can wrap it up. You can put your, uh, you know what I'm saying, aluminum foil or, or whatever, a, a, a body condom on yourself. It's still sin. It's still, the results are the same. The wages of sin is death, okay? You can wrap yourself up from head to toe, okay? The word says, if you even look on a woman and lust after, you are already guilty in your heart. You ain't got to commit the act. So we can't think that just because we commit the act that the, the spirit man, the soul is not involved. Man is a spirit. He lives in, he has a living soul and he lives in a physical body. Okay. That what makes a man whole one. And you cannot separate one from the other. And then we're born again, sealed by the Holy Spirit. We got to think if I do this, then I'll make myself one with this harlot. So then you basically are being a harlot. You're being a male whore or a female whore. And I've been guilty of it so many times. And guess what? The Holy Spirit convict me. God chasing my spirit sore. Okay. Yeah. And you crying out to God, Lord, forgive me. Deliver me. Like you, then you realize this person is not a believer and they're, they're, they're pulling on your spirit. They're dogging you out from the spirit. They're probably working witchcraft and sorcery, controlling and manipulating you. You're like, what? Because you joined yourself to someone who is the enemy of your soul. Okay, abstain from flesh and lust, which war against the soul. They're not your friend. They're your enemy. When they say love your enemy, he don't mean go sleep with them. <laughs> it's your husband. Your, those, you know, do them good. Pray for them. You know, like that. He didn't say sleep with them and commit sin with them. Don't be naive, okay? But understand what the will of the Lord is. Don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is, okay? So we need deliverance. We need deliverance. Like, Lord, I need you to deliver me from, you know what I'm saying, from being one in my spirit and in my heart, you know, in my mind, my will, my emotion, my body, that I've joined myself into that person that wasn't my husband or wife. I need deliverance. You know what I'm saying? I need you by your Holy Spirit to come in and make us a, a separation. And then we have our responsibility. Remember, he said, come out from among them. So you, we got to do our part. Come out from among them. Separate yourself from them. Cleanse yourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. I will receive you. Okay? I'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Okay? I will deliver you. Okay? Yeah, you can't just say, oh, Lord, like you say a prayer and then you go right back and continue on in sin. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. 
Don't you know that whoever you yield yourselves service to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness? You want to be a slave of sin? You keep serving sin, then you're a slave of sin. You say, God, God, all you want, but as long as you doing what sin wants you to do, commands you to do, and you obey it, you're a slave of sin. You're a slave of sin. I know I used to be. But I stopped yielding to sin. I stopped obeying sin. The word says we do not have to we do not have to obey sin and the lust thereof. Sin is no longer my master. So when sin says sin, I was like, get thee behind me, sin. You know, subdue it, cast it away. You know what I'm saying? Like that. You got to take authority. Like you don't have to obey sin on temptation. You don't have to obey it. You know what I'm saying? You need to rise up in your spirit, man. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Take a stand against sin. Like I said, submit to God first. Then you will be empowered. You can take a stand. You can resist the devil. You can resist the temptation. You can resist, you know, uh, the temptations of sin, the power of sin, and break it. That will have no longer dominion over you. The word says that sin so long, no longer have rule over you, dominion over you. Like, you don't, you're not my master no more. You better get thee behind me. Matter of fact, get under my feet. I don't have to obey you no more. You're not my master no more. And if people don't know who they are in Christ. They, you know, the authority have an identity in Christ. And so when sin comes along, they're like, okay, I try to resist. I guess so. God know my heart. Okay, sin. Excuse me, God. I'm going to go obey sin for a little bit and I'll be back. No, you can't serve two masters. Either you're going to hold to the one and, and despise, abhor the other, okay? Or you're going to love one and hate the other. So if you, you know what I'm saying? If you love the pleasures of sin, you hate God. <laughs> Ain't no middle ground. You can't, you can't love God and love sin too. You can't, your know, money can't be your master, sin, the flesh, and the devil, and the demon. That can't be your master and God. He ain't going to have that. He's not going to share you with nobody else. You're either serving God or you're not. You're either joined to God, one with him, or you're not. Okay? Glory to God. Amen. Apostle. Amen. Whoever is that? I can't. Uh, what your name is there? Type in your name. Just your name so I can see your name. This is a lot there. I'm going to miss calling out. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 says, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. See? What know you not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? You're joining yourself to a harlot. I don't care if they don't call themselves a harlot. They not be out on the street corner selling their body. You know, what I'm saying um, sex for money or things or favors. I don't care if they call themselves an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, or a teacher, or a deacon, or a Christian. If they not your husband and wife, and you go join yourself into, they are harlots. They're practicing harlotry, and you'll be doing it too. You won't be no better. I don't care what they call themselves. You know the tree by the fruit it bear. What you practicing? You gonna reap what you sow. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. He's a jealous guy, exactly. Okay? Because he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. But if you join yourself unto the, you know, he says, know you not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body. For two says he shall be one flesh. You just basically married that person. Illegally. Illegally. It's not recognized by God. It's not a holy matrimony. Yeah, it makes sense, don't it? It's illegally. It's not accepted by God. It's not recognized by God. Because it's not in holy matrimony. Because first of all, you're with a, a harlot, an a, a unbeliever, an infidel. I don't care if you go to somebody and say they're a Christian and like that. It's like, no, you're, you're practicing harlotry. Okay? Be not to see. God is not mocked. God will judge his people. God will judge fornicators and adulterers. God will judge. I don't care if you're an unbeliever or you're a Christian or whichever you profess to be. He will judge sin. And those who are yoking up with it, practicing it. You having sex and you ain't married to your husband and wife and joining yourself and, you know, saying that's practicing harlotry. 
That's a form of idolatry. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's contrary to God's will. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. When the Holy Spirit came, you know what I'm saying? Like that. We were joined unto the, whole, to the Lord by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit, we were sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. Matter of fact, it said he would be with you forever. Like nothing in all creation, no other power can break that seal. So we go in, you know what I'm saying, start practicing harlotry and intentional sin. It's almost like we're making, you know, saying God be partaker with our sins, even though he's not going to. What he's going to do is through his Holy Spirit, his presence, he's going to convict us of sin to produce godly sorrow in the heart that works repentance Okay, that's not to be regretted. And it's like, we like, oh God. And it can go deep too. Okay. Yeah. We can con be convicted severely if that's what it takes to get you to break away from that sin. God will convict us severely. Like down in, in, in your whole spirit, your whole soul, your whole body, your bones. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. The word will cut deep. All the way to the bottom, to the north, the south, the east, the west, the southwest, northwest, all of it. He going to thoroughly purge his floor. He said, I am holy, therefore you shall be holy. When I get through convicting you, you ain't going to think twice about sinning. You're going to be like, Hell no to sin. Get thee behind me, okay? You trying to come between me and, you know what I'm saying? The Lord, we one spirit. We don't have no threesomes over here, okay? We don't have no threesomes. It's me and the Lord, okay? And I'm so satisfied with my Savior. He means more to me than anything, any feeling, okay? Any amount of money or whatever power, okay, that this world can offer me. I'm so satisfied with my Savior, okay? Come on, black boy, joy. Blessings, my brother. Okay, showing up, amen. Yes, yes, thank God for grace and mercy. Yeah, but don't take it for granted, okay? Don't take it for granted, yeah. That's his loving, chastening discipline, okay? He does that, that we may be partakers of his holiness. So we got to, you know what I'm saying, cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness and the fear of God. See, the only reason why we would do it, because why? We, we, we talking about love, grace, and mercy, okay? But we're about the fear of God. That's the beginning of wisdom. See, we don't fear God. He's my heavenly father. Why should I fear anything from him? Oh, okay, so you don't fear the judgment of God. You don't think he would do it. The psalmist says, Keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion on me. Okay, keep me back from, because if I presume that I can do this and I'm going to, you know, just run to you, you're just going to give me grace and mercy and forgive me. And we, we good now, right? We good. And it's no consequence, right? And no consequence. No. Okay, they will have dominion over you. You know what I'm saying? You shall be holding with the cords of your own sins. You're like, wait a minute. I was born free. What? I'm, what happened? Where did this come from? I'm a slave. I'm a slave. I'm a slave again? Oh, you didn't know? But God set you free from? Oh, okay. Then I need to let your sins wrap around you and take you captive. And you know. You realize how much you were a slave to sin. And when you experience it in your whole spirit, in your whole soul, in your whole body, you be crying out to the Lord. Lord, save me from my sins. <laughs> save me from myself. <laughs> save me. Okay? Sin is crouching at, at the door. And we got to rule over it. It should not be ruling, having dominion over us. Okay? Man should not make occasions for sin. Yeah, exactly. Make no provisions for uh, the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. 
He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. We know that we're sealed by the spirit of God. We are joined together. We are one spirit. That's what Jesus prayed, right? In John, that we be one spirit, right? Mm-hmm. Wow. We want to overcome the world of flesh and the devil, right? John chapter 17, verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify you me, glorify thou with me, thou you, glorify you me with your own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name unto the men which you gave me out of the world. There's Yours they were, and you gave them me, gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever you have given me are of you. For I have given unto them the words which you gave me, and they have received them. And have known surely that I came out from you. And they have believed that you did send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. But for them which you have give, given me. For they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I have come to you. Holy Father, keep through your own name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those that you gave me, I have kept and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, 
even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. As you has have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me and the glory which you gave me I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that you have sent me and has loved them as you have loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have known that you have sent me. And I have declared unto them your name and will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. Amen, praise God. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. See, one spirit. See, and his spirit rules over all, in all, and through you all, okay? Your spirit, my spirit, we all going to be one, okay? That is what, you know, the, the father's doing, conforming us to the image of his dear son, okay? The father, the son, the Holy Spirit in us, okay? And we in them. In him, we're one. There's one body and one spirit. That is the Holy Spirit, God's spirit, the spirit of Christ. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all you, me, all the members of the body of Christ. And in you all, he's in all of us, okay? Amen. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. See, and his spirit is supposed to be ruling and reigning, okay, over our spirit, okay? We died to ourselves, okay? He is Lord of all, okay? Our whole spirit, our whole soul, our whole body. We are no longer our own. So he says in verse 18, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, flee fornication, avoid it, 
See, shun it. When the temptation presents itself, if you need be, flee from fornication. Avoid all appearance of evil, all forms of evil. Okay? Don't act like you super spiritual. Okay? You feel temptation, your flesh is coming up. You haven't brought your flesh under subjection that you can't stand. Okay? Then flee. Depart from iniquity. Okay? Run. I don't care which way you got to go. Get the hell out of there. Okay? Run. Flee. Avoid it. Leave. Wherever the temptation is with a sin, okay? Whoever practicing it, get away from them. Get her, Come out from among them. Okay? The Lord undergirds you and you strong. You got your undergarments, you know what I'm saying, on. I'm talking about your spiritual clothing on and your spiritual armor. And he says, go take a stand. Then you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Okay? You can have the victory over sin, the world of devil, temptation. You can stand with the victory. See? Well, if you know you don't did, don't. Don't try to, you know, you gotta prove nothing to nobody. Flee if you need to have, if you have to. Flee, avoid it. Flee for an occasion. He says, every sin that a man does is without the body. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he that commits fornication, even adultery, sins against his own body. See, if it ain't your husband, it ain't your wife, it's sinning against your own body. Them harlots, they don't care. They practicing sinners. That's normal to them. That's like breathing. You know, they're not thinking about, they don't fear God. They're not thinking about the consequences. They don't have the Holy Spirit to convict them. Their consciences are seared as with a hot iron. Okay, a whore can go out and sell her body a hundred times a day as long as they're paying her. She like, do what you want to do. Or you want me to say, ooh, I, whatever. If that's what you pay me for, I do it. I say it. Okay? Don't make no money. As long as I got my money. That's what she into. That's her God. Okay? She got to worship her God. She got to, you know, like that. But check this out. He says, flee fornication. Every sin that a man does is without the body, outside the body. But he that commits fornication sins against his own body, which we're going to see is no longer his body. The believer's body is not our own. He says, what? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, the Holy, the Holy Spirit? You didn't know that? That your body and my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, the Holy Spirit in you, the Holy Spirit in me, which you have of God, which we have received from God. Okay, the promise of the Holy Spirit, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, pardon of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise of the Holy Spirit is unto you and to your children, and to as many as are far off. Doesn't matter where you're at in the world, okay? And to as many as the Lord our God shall call. He's calling you personally unto himself. Respond to him in repentance, faith, and obedience, and God will fulfill his promise and give you too and your children the Holy Spirit, okay? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, okay? You have no more I-N-D-P-E-N-D-E-N-T independence. You don't have no more. I don't have no more independence. The only freedom liberty I have is to obey God. That's the only liberty and freedom we have is to obey God, to worship him as he has prescribed in spirit and truth, to obey his commands and ordinances under the new covenant. That's what we have liberty and freedom for, to worship God freely, to serve him freely in spirit and in truth. OK, that's what the freedom is for. It's not to continue in sin. Because we are not our own. Verse 20 says, for you, I and I are bought with a price, with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, as of a lamb without blemish. Blemish, Okay? For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your body, my body, your spirit, my spirit, belong to God. It's his, okay? He can do with it whatever he want to do with it, okay? 
He shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. Okay. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. The cattle upon a thousand hills, they belong to the Lord. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. It all belongs to him. My God. Amen. Praise God. So we started this out of 1 Thessalonians. Well, we started actually in uh, Psalms 36 and 4. Right. Along with the couplet of First uh, Thessalonians, right? Look, yeah. Let me go back there. Just give a little bit. Read that scripture there. Psalm thirty. No, was it no? Six sixty-four. Was it sixty-four? Hold up. Let's see if I can remember. I think it was sixty-four. Hmm. Yeah. Or was it 36? Oh, I think I lost my train of thought. I think it was 36. 36 or 4? No. 64? 86? <laughs> I didn't write it. <laughs> anyway, we just go to Thessalonians. It's on the tape. Hopefully they record it. We go to Thessalonians, and this is uh, a foundational text. So just, uh, just remind us. Amen. Well, we built off, the, laid the foundation. And this is what the Lord was showing me. You know what I'm saying? Like that. We must be first partakers. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. It also reads in another translation, you know what I'm saying, to avoid or abstain from all forms of evil. We speak about, you know what I'm saying, evil comes in many forms. Appearances is also translated view. We think about the show. In America or ABC, I think it's called the view. You know what I'm saying? Like that. We need to have the view of, you know what I'm saying? Be watching what God wants through, looking through the eyes of the spirit and not through, looking through the eyes of the flesh or looking through the eyes of the world or looking through the eyes of sin. We need to abstain and avoid, abhor and detest all forms, all appearances, all views of evil. We should hate and avoid what God hates. And that's sin. That's evil, especially evil. Evil is manifesting in a lot of forms, a lot of appearances, especially this month of Halloween. So when it looks all innocent, you know, people got their kids out and they out with their kids, they dressed up and in the street, trick or treating and everything like that, having fellowshipping with demons. You know, the word said we cannot be partaker of the Lord's cup and the cup of demons. We cannot be partaker of the Lord's table, Lord's supper. And the table of demons. Demons got their table spread too. They're like, come over here. Go read Proverbs when he talks about the wise woman. She done made spread to her table. And that other woman, that sinful woman, that harlot, she got a table spread too. She's out there calling the pastor by, come on in here, eat of my bread. Can't be partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. See what I'm saying? People don't know that the things that the nation sacrifice, they sacrifice them to demons and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with demons. We're not down with demon month. No kind of demon, no kind of form of evil. We're supposed to hate it. You see this, all that stuff on TV, the horror movies and all that stuff? We should detest it, despise it. Don't look at it, turn from it. Don't, don't entertain it. Don't allow evil to entertain you as well. Don't allow yourself to be entertained by evil. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. Y'all pray for my strength in the Lord. I would appreciate it very much. Amen. Praise God. Well, excuse me. I've gone long enough on this particular live. I'm going to give... I, Fish, you know, I already give an invitation to Christ, but I give a fish you want to pronounce a blessing over your lives in this broadcast for future viewers, Lord willing to be chorus. And in the near future, probably in the next about 48 hours, I'll download it, edit it, because I was playing music in the beginning, edit it, take the music out, and upload it to my YouTube channel. And the most likely it's going to probably be entitled, you know what I'm saying, like that, to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 there, abstain from all appearance of evil, Okay. So that the saints can be warned. That's a commandment. It's not an option. I don't care if your, your, your company have a Halloween party. Okay? It's a command. Okay? No. Thank you, but no thank you. I will not be there. 
Okay, you can whatever you write me up. What you trying to get rid of me? No, no, not because I don't show up at no Halloween party or any other thing. I think y'all gonna be sinning. I'm not gonna be fellowshipping and you know what I'm saying with any of that. I come here and I do my work as unto the Lord. Okay, because I we serve the Lord and not man, and our reward comes from the Lord, not man. So our expectation and hope is not from man, and nor should we fear the reproach of man, okay? Because the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, and blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Lord can bless you, okay? He gave you that. He can give you even more, okay? So don't fear man. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we never want to close the broadcast without giving an official invitation to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to become his follower, his disciple of his Holy Spirit. His holy living word, his commands and ordinances under the New Testament to, uh, covenant of grace. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, you, me, or anyone in the world, past, present, and future, but that the world through him might be saved. So we say, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission, pardon of your sins. And when you do this, God's promise is you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise of the Holy Spirit is unto you and to your children and to as many as are far off. It doesn't matter where you're at in the world and to as many as the Lord our God shall call. He's calling you personally unto himself. Respond to him in repentance, faith, and obedience. Amen. And pray and ask the Lord to lead you to a faithful follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, or an assembly of saints. And let them know that you want to obey the Lord's ordinance in baptism. Amen. To be planted in the likeness of Jesus' death, fully immersed in the water, baptized, raised out of the water, in the likeness of his resurrection, to therefore walk, live in the newness of life, living in the spirit, walking in the spirit, being led of his Holy Spirit. And when we do this, God's promise is we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So pray and ask the Lord to lead you by his spirit. Amen to where he will have you to join yourselves with other believers in assembly. Amen. And who you are to be subject, submitted unto faithful under shepherds called pastors, teachers, elders, overseers, bishops, presbyters, evangelists, God's true prophets, and those who are apostles, that is serving in the office of the apostles as messengers of the assemblies, along with the deacons. Amen. Praise God. So that you can be taught, trained, the doctrine of Christ, the teachings and instructions of Christ, his commandments and ordinance under the new covenant of grace. Amen. As you desire the sincere milk of the word, you may grow up into him that is in Christ Jesus in all things, who is the head of all things to his assembly, his body, his called out ones. Amen. Unto strong meat which are the deeper truths and revelations of the living word of God, which belong unto us who are of full age, spiritually mature, who by reason of use, exercising, training, putting into action, have our senses exercised, trained to discern both good and evil, that we will learn to hold fast to that which is good, Never let anyone take it away from you and to stand aloof from 
that which is evil, abstain from all appearance, all forms of evil, okay? Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, okay? But rather reprove them. And even if you have to, flee from evil in all of its forms. Amen. Praise God. And pray and ask the Lord if I am to be one of those faithful under shepherds who are to disciple you in the doctrine of Christ, which he gave to his holy apostles, which is also called the apostles' doctrine, which is sound doctrine, which is healthy and helpful for your whole spirit, for your whole soul, for your whole body, for your whole life. Amen. And Lord willing, I would be here to serve you. You're welcome to follow my ministry here on TikTok. Hit the follow button. Hit that notification uh, bell so you'll be notified when I'm going live. Uh, you're welcome to repost and share off the platform any of my TikToks here. Amen. And I've done a lot of videos here and over the years on Facebook Live and uh, on my YouTube channel. And so uh, you'll see a link, uh, direct.me. That's my link. It'll take you to that profile. You'll see all my social media links uh, if you want to follow me on the other platforms. But definitely go over to my YouTube channel because that's where the main body of my work is. You know, saying that uh, my videos, so a lot of videos over there um, where you can grow in the knowledge and grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, even shorts. Amen. So all I ask is that when you watch them, I pray you be edified. Uh, hit that like button for me. Make sure you subscribe first and hit the notification bell over there. And then, you know, hit the like button, leave a comment to encourage me and others who read the comments for encouragement and fellowship. And then say a prayer and then share it with others off the platform. I would appreciate it very much. I pray that the Lord would bless your efforts. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And for those of you who are already my brothers and sisters in Christ, amen, uh, we encourage you to obey the commands of the Lord as he has said, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. For so has the Lord ordained that they that preach the gospel should live of the gospel. And in 1 Timothy chapter 5, the laborer is worthy of his hire, his pay. And in Galatians chapter 6, let him that is taught in the word share, communicate all good things with his teacher. So we encourage you to obey the command of the Lord. Amen. And whatever you purpose in your heart to give, give it. Uh, cheerfully unto the Lord because he loves, God loves a cheerful giver and so do I. Amen. I, bless, I pray the Lord will bless your obedience and your faithfulness and your grace gifts. So um, as long with, like I said, you'll see the link direct.me. When you go there, you will not only see uh, links to my other social media platforms, but you'll also see like PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. So if you're on one of those, or all of those, you're welcome to give through one of those. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So we never want to close the broadcast without pronouncing a blessing of your lives and this broadcast for future viewers. Amen. Praise God. So this time, we ask you all to lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. Open up your hearts to receive the blessing. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Grace be with you all. Amen. Amen. Praise.
praise God. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. I love you. You all continue to have a super blessed day, night, even in the Lord Jesus Christ with your family, Christian friends, and all the saints of God with you. And Lord willing, we will see you all soon. Amen. Somebody tap that screen and make it. I say uh, thank you for your likes and the shares and your gifts. May the Lord bless you wonderful. I almost forgot to say that. And it's 999 likes. Somebody just tap it one time, and I think that would make a, a even 1,000 like. Amen. Praise God. May the Lord bless you all 100 fold. Amen. Lord willing, I'm feeling good, so I think I might, you know, see what I might get a little breakfast in me or something like that. I don't know. I'm not really hungry. Just take a few minutes break, you know, get myself together, and I might just come back on, you know what I'm saying? We'll play some more gospel music and like that, and if you got any prayer requests or anything like that, testimonies, thanksgivings, and we can see how the Holy Spirit move again. Amen. God bless you and love you. See you soon. Thank you for following, Lacey.